Since I made some silver nitrate some time ago, let's use it and make some silver acetylide, Ag2C2. Silver acetylide was first synthesized in 1866 by Marcelo Bartolou from inorganic sources. It's typically made today using calcium carbide, which is CaC2, and the gas acetylene the calcium carbide produces when it's mixed with water. It's both heat and shock sensitive, and it detonates. It doesn't deflagrate, say, like gunpowder. It does produce a very loud bang for the quantity that is typically used. And so because of that, it's suggested to do not ignite silver acetylide in quantities more than two and a half grams indoors. I would recommend don't do anything indoors, but this was a warning I found, so I thought I'd list it. So speaking of detonation, let's go over that just a little bit. First, let's uh, cover a couple things. The detonation velocity for silver acetylide is 1,200 meters per second. It's not really that high compared to some things, but it's relatively quick when you put it into real life terms. Sound travels at 343 meters per second at 20 degrees Celsius. We can see that the velocity that this detonates at is much higher than that of sound. And that is why you even have detonation or the term detonation. And that is, it's a supersonic exothermic front that accelerates through a medium. And that medium typically is the air fuel mixture that's actually burning. So I have a little diagram here that hopefully will help better understand what's happening here. So here's your explosion which is a detonation in this case, and you have the air fuel mix that's expanding out from the explosion. As soon as it explodes, a sound wave is formed. So the air fuel mix burning and the sound wave are traveling immediately at the same point. However, within a very short period of time, the air fuel mix starts burning faster and through the sound wave that's produced. And as it spreads out, it gets thinner. So oftentimes, if you're far enough away from the actual explosion, what you will feel is a rush of air maybe some warmth from the burning fuel mix, but it's dissipated so much by then, but there will be absolutely no sound. And then maybe a second or two or three later, the sound wave comes and you hear the crackle and the bang of the actual explosion. So the flame front's traveling faster than the sound. It tends to push air out in front of it. Eventually it dissipates. And what you end up with just a bunch of warm air, hot air traveling really fast that might hit a bystander. And then the sound comes a few seconds later. And that is what a detonation is. And this flame front, just so we're really accurate about this, is actually traveling supersonic because it's going faster than the sound is. Compare this now to a deflagration, say, of gunpowder, where the opposite is true, where the sound barrier travels first, followed by the explosion uh, and the heat. And that's typically what you'll see of almost anything. If you see methane burning or propane blowing up or gunpowder, it's almost always this way. The detonation is the unusual one, and usually it takes a special explosive to do that such as the silver acetylide. On to our materials here. Uh, we need four things. We need silver nitrate, AgNO3, five grams, nitric acid, 20 milliliters of a 10% solution, and that's asterisk because I have 70% and we're gonna go over how to end up with 10%. We also need the calcium carbide, CaC2, which will produce the acetylene gas when we mix it with water. Next, I'd like to talk about the reactions here. So they're listed one through four in the order that they should proceed when we do the actual experiment. The first one here is a silver nitrate plus two HNO3 will yield free silver plus three nitrates plus two hydrogens. Second one here in a separate container entirely, we're going to take our calcium carbide, mix it with two waters, and of course that yields calcium hydroxide plus C2H2, which is our acetylene gas. Third one, we're going to take our acetylene gas and we're going to bubble it through the beaker that has these products in it right now. So the C2H2, of course, is the acetylene plus the silver plus the nitrates plus the hydrogen. And what that will yield is Ag2C2, which is our silver acetylide and four nitric acids. At this point here, the silver acetylide is insoluble and it will fall out of solution as a solid. Finally, number four, we take our silver acetylide, the AG2C2, apply heat to it somehow, either through uh, friction or fire, and when it blows up, we end up with two free silvers, two carbons, and a very loud bang. And for the quantities typically used when this is done, this bang is extremely loud, and I'm just letting you know. Even though I just kind of went over the whole method when I went through the uh, reactions here, I'm going to go over it in more detail pretty quickly. So here's our 20 milliliters of 10%. Uh, nitric acid, we're going to add the silver nitrate, 5 grams to that, and uh, allow it to mix up good. The idea really is to make sure that this solution turns completely clear. So we may have to add more nitric acid to have that happen. In a second, uh, separate place, we're going to take a flask. We're going to put in our calcium carbide and water, and I'm going to cork it with a tube so that when this is done and clear, we can then add the acetylene gas and bubble it through the solution 
which is this reaction right here that we talked about uh, while it's being stirred. And as that happens, the solid of Ag2C2, which is our silver acetylide, will fall out of solution here, which then can be filtered. The nitric acid can be removed as it's dripping through here, and then we'll just dry our silver acetylide. At that point, we're gonna light it. I'll try a couple different things just to see how it reacts, and we will have completed the experiment. Let's go ahead and make our silver acetylide. As I mentioned earlier, here's the problem that we need to solve. We are starting with a 70% solution of nitric acid, and what we want to end up with is 20 milliliters of a 10% solution. Once again, we're going to come back to this equation, which has been used multiple times, and that is C1V1 equals C2V2, C is concentration, and V is volume. We start with a 70% concentration that we have. We don't know the volume of it yet, but that has to be equal to 10% solution of 20 milliliters so this is all nitric acid basically we need to figure out how much of the 70 percent do we need to add to a certain volume of water so that the final volume is 20 milliliters with a 10 percent solution using the numbers that have already been inserted into the equation right here we'll just flip a few things around so we have v1 is equal to 0.1 times 20 and then that will be divided by 0.7 as is shown right here so if we do this multiplication right here, that is not multiplication, that is division. We will end up with 2.86 milliliters, and we know that that has to be 70%. But what does this actually mean? And this is where the equation becomes somewhat powerful, and I, I'm not sure that you might know what I mean, but basically this has to be solved the way it is because of the equal sign. These have to be equal. So somehow this 2.86 has to be part of this over here too because these sides are equal well when doing these you'll learn quickly that what that means is that that's the volume that you need to be adding to the water to end up with the final volume of 20 milliliters because it has to be 20 milliliters that's what this side of the equation says so you need the 20 milliliters as your final volume so if you take that and subtract the 2.86 milliliters you'll end up with 17.14 milliliters and that is the amount of water that you're going to add the 2.86 to get the final volume of 20 milliliters with a 10% solution. In real life, we measure out our 17.14 milliliters or close to of water, and then we add our 2.86 milliliters of our 70% solution. We'll end up with 20 milliliters, and it will be the 10% solution that we need to make our silver acetylide. I've said a couple times, you really need to do these equations more than once to kind of get a grasp of what you're doing. Solving for the number isn't hard, but then figuring out what to do with that number is what's important. Okay, we're done with this. We're gonna make the 10% uh, solution of nitric acid now. This is what I call 70%, it's 69.8% nitric acid and I'm going to round it to 70 percent. I've also rounded a couple other numbers here to actually do the experiment because trying to get a one one hundredth of a milliliter to do something is just beyond what I'm able to do. In this graduated cylinder I have 34.3 milliliters and uh, the actual number is I think 34.28 so that's rounded up a tiny bit. None of this is going to really matter when we actually do the experiment so I'm going to pour that in this 100 milliliter beaker here. And to that 100 milliliters, I'm going to add 2.85 milliliters of the 70% nitric acid. The actual number was 2.86. This is going to have to be close enough. And I'm going to do it twice because I doubled the amount of distilled water. Here goes the first, always adding acid to water. And here goes the second. Just a close up of the 40 milliliters of 10% nitric acid. This is a system I've set up to make the silver acetylide. So here is a small beaker that the nitric acid will go in initially. Here is 20 milliliters of 10% nitric acid pre-measured right there. And that's the extra in case I need it. There is the five grams of silver nitrate that's being protected from any light. It's under that can there. Then on this side, I have a flask with a rubber stopper and hosing so that when I need the acetylene gas, I can just grab this and bubble it through the solution like so. Pretty simple. And then on this side is just the water I'll be pouring in there. Okay, everything's set up. Let's do this. First thing we're going to do is pour in the 20 milliliters of nitric acid. Turn it 
Turn on the magnetic stir pretty low here. Let me get that centered better. There we go. Okay. And now we're going to add our five grams of silver nitrate. The reason you want to make sure that this is clear is because you want a very low concentration of nitric acid. And if there's any yellowing, it's not low enough. Simple as that. So we may not have to add anything to this. We'll have to see once all of this is added, meaning the silver nitrate here. Be back when it's all dissolved. We slow down the magnetic stir here. You can see that it is completely dissolved and very clear. There's no coloring to it whatsoever. So I'm going to turn the magnetic stir on. And next we're going to be adding the water to the uh, calcium carbide there. I'm going to remove the rubber stopper here. To control the amount of acetylene, I'm going to do that by how much water I add. So I'm going to start out with a small amount, probably something around 5 to 10 milliliters. So it doesn't take long for that to get going. And we're back here. And I'm going to start to bubble the acetylene gas through. It's turned into this milkyish, grayish color. That's our silver acetylide. A couple things are happening. The acetylene is slowing down uh, a lot, and I think that this is a good slurry of the silver acetylide, so I'm going to call it quits here. And we'll take this out and look at it closer. I removed the magnetic stir. And uh, there's a lot that had stuck to the sides here, actually. So I'm going to push this all down into the solution itself. Just a quick peek at the calcium hydroxide that was formed when the calcium carbide mixed with the uh, water. Ready to vacuum filter our silver acetylide here. You can see that it's nicely settled at the bottom. However, I'm still going to have to, in fact, I'm going to use some of that liquid and, and mix it about rather than having some solid stuck at the bottom. And the greatest thing is that silver acetylide does not dissolve in water. All right, it's pretty much done dripping. I washed it a little bit more with distilled water. You can see down here, that's a little bit uh, gray colored uh, because some of the particles I think were too fine for this filter paper, but that's no big deal. Go ahead and take this filter paper out of here now. Here's our silver acetylide. Those marks are uh, areas that I pushed in so the water could better be dispersed throughout it and wash it better. So it just needs to dry now. I'm gonna break this up a little bit beforehand. Um, there's quite a bit here and I don't want to ignite it all at one time. While this is still pretty wet actually, I'm gonna just peel it off and put it onto a new piece of filter paper here. Okay, done. That's the original piece of filter paper that came out of the vacuum filtration part of this experiment. So there's dried silver acetylide on there. There's not much. So I'm going to give it a try and hit this with a hammer a few times to see if we can't get it to detonate. Okay, here we go. Bang. Look at that. Again. Okay. There wasn't much there. But the next thing I'm going to do is take this around a tenth of a gram that's stuck to this filter paper and light it and see what happens. Okay, I'm outside now, of course, and I'm going to take this small piece of metal that was just out here already and put it on top and then light it.
That was just the filter paper. This little red cap contains approximately three tenths of a gram of silver acetylide. And what I'm gonna do is just cover this with a can here, like so, and light the end. There you go.